In Texas, there was recently a high school football game played between Fort Worth Western Hills and Alito High School. Alito won this game by the lopsided score of 91 to nothing. And this prompted one of the parents from the Fort Worth Western Hills team to file a bullying complaint against the coaches from Alito High School. Now, to be clear, the coaches from Alito High School were in fact playing their third and fourth string, but they didn't call off the dog, so to speak, and say, you know, don't try to score or stop doing anything or don't play, don't put forth an effort. And yet this person filed bullying complaints. I have problems with this on a couple different levels, and I want to talk about them. First of all, on the level of what the words mean, I think there's a problem. See, words have meaning. I'm constantly arguing this when we talk about same-sex marriage and what does marriage mean. But in this case, we're talking about what does the word bullying mean? And there are, in fact, real instances of bullying in our society. And they are tragic. And in many cases, somebody who's bullied has severe counseling needs that they need to go through. And in some cases, we've even seen people take their own life as a result of bullying. So it is a real serious issue in our society. And to take the true pain that people experience from real bullying and compare it to something like a high school team where one team just isn't as competitive as another in a football game seems to me to minimize the real pain that people go through in bullying and almost makes it such that the pain is meaningless. Um, see, when everything is constituted as bullying, you might as well say nothing is bullying then at that point. Um, and that's a real problem. So it changes the definition of that word. And I think that words have meaning and we need to be respectful of those meanings. So certainly we could say that Fort Worth Western Hills just wasn't as competitive, but to fault Alito for playing a good game seems to me problematic, especially if you want to call that bullying. On another level, though, sports, I think, provides a great analogy for the spiritual life. And in the spiritual life, we are always called to strive for excellence. We're always called to strive for greatness, not to settle for mediocrity. And by asking a team to stop performing well, um, to call off the dog, so to speak, you're asking the team not to exceed, not to, to strive for excellence. It's one thing to say, you know, you need to put in your second and third string or fourth string or whatever it is, but it's another thing to say, and don't let those guys do anything either when they're in there. Because then that's not really fair to the players that are in there that maybe this is their only game to play or something like that. But beyond that, there's this point where we have to say we should always be striving for excellence. And this is a fundamental Christian principle. We see in the New Testament, St. Paul always talking about a more excellent way, and we see that um, Jesus Christ himself talks about striving for perfection, especially when he talks to the rich young man, for example. And so in all these stories, there's this sense in which we are always called to something greater than we are, which is why I say sports is a great analogy for the Christian life. It's a great um, benchmark, so to speak, because athletes are constantly trying to get better, athletes who are serious, and they, they're training themselves and doing everything they can to discipline themselves to achieve excellence. And the right response that we should have would be to applaud them when they do achieve that excellence rather than to say, you've achieved too much and we would like you to lay off for a little while. And the same thing is true with our spiritual lives. You know, we should be striving for excellence. And when we see models of excellence, we should applaud them. This is what the Catholic Church does, of course, in the saints. Rather than to say, oh no, you guys have gotten to be too holy and you've set a bar too high for the rest of us now. How can we possibly get into heaven or something to that effect? So there's a sense in which we're always called to excellence. My sister uh, played soccer for the University of Notre Dame, go Irish. And when she played soccer, she'll tell the story of how there was one time in a game the Notre Dame team had won by a lopsided score. I think it was 10 nothing or something to that effect, which in soccer is a huge margin. And the opposing team's coach came over and complained to the Notre Dame coach and said, you know, why did you have to run up the score like that? And the Notre Dame coach responded by saying, well, if you don't like it, then get better. See, I think that's an accurate response, as harsh as it might sound, because sports is meant to call us to excellence and then to call everybody to mediocrity and to create some environment where every kid gets a trophy, so to speak. And I think that's what we need to be doing. That's the analogy that sports gives us for our spiritual lives, in addition to the fact that we shouldn't be changing the definitions of words and comparing something as serious as true bullying to something as minimal as a sporting event. So I think that in many cases, Cases. I was very glad to hear that the Alito coaches were cleared of any bullying charges and they were found to be uh, without any kind of substance. And I do think, though, that what we can learn from this is that, A, words have meaning and we need to be 
sensitive to that fact so that we don't minimize the pain of true bullying or any other uh, entity by changing the definition of the word. And the second thing is that we're always called to strive for excellence. And we shouldn't look at a person who's achieving excellence or a group of people who's achieving excellence and complain about that. But rather, we should look at them as a model and say, this is what we need to try to be like. This is greatness, and we ourselves should strive for greatness.